time for some change. I've got some uh, pretty substantial changes coming up with my photography as far as gear goes. I'm not changing anything fundamentally, like I'm not going to stop shooting film and uh, I'm not going to ditch digital altogether. But what I am going to do is change my gear a little bit. And I just shipped off my medium format, my Pentax 645N. Kind of broke my heart to do it. But with uh, a lot of time to think, for this last five, six months, it's more important to me to have a bigger negative and uh, a little more versatility on the other side. So Nori and I are out exploring a new area not sure if i'm gonna find a photograph here today i only have a couple hours we're in a old growth forest and i just wanted to kind of take a look and see if there's anything out here i want to photograph you know of course nori's my little companion today i feel kind of like a flake <laughs> I, I was I watched my last video on this subject when I had convinced myself that all I just need is a couple more lenses for my Pentax and I could just settle on that system and and uh, it it would be like a middle ground something to use for everything but it's become clear to me that I just can't use one system for everything and I found that the Pentax Although a joy to use and I just really it was just a really great camera to use It really uh, Wasn't it wasn't the best at both things that I'm looking for It wasn't the most versatile. It wasn't as compact as the 35 millimeter setup and The negative was not big enough for Some of the enlargements that I'd like to do <laughs> So, this week I just decided it was time to pack it up and I send it off to KEH with the plan of getting a large format body to start with. I have a lens right now and some film holders. I'll need to get a uh, development tank so I can process my own film. And then fill out a, a large format kit, with, which will just basically be two or three lenses. I don't see myself need more than that. And then on the other end, I'll be using my 35 millimeter, either film or digital. A lot of it just depends on the shoot. I'm going back to using a system or approach that I, I kind of started out with years ago. I would take my 4x5 camera out and I would shoot, find something I like to shoot, I'd photograph it, but I'd also have along an SLR and I used its meter, uh, its spot meter, and I would take backup shots on 35mm just in case something happened to my 4x5. And because 4x5 film is pretty expensive and it hasn't got any cheaper. Come on, Nori. <laughs> So I'll have the 35 millimeter either digital a digital file or a 
a film file to uh, back up my 4x5. And starting out, I'm not going to have a lot of lenses, so if I need a certain focal length for a shot, I will most likely have that in 35mm, um, if it's telephoto or a little wider angle. And then eventually I'll have probably the wide angle covered and maybe a short telephoto. When I can afford it, I will shoot the 4x5. When the conditions are right, when it's not too windy. But then when it's... I don't have to stop shooting if I've got my 35mm. So if the conditions aren't right, I'll pull out 35mm and use that. And I've come to the conclusion that 35mm uh, is, is good enough. It's, it is smaller than the 645, negative-wise. But for the sizes that I use most of the stuff for zines and book size photos, it's, it's quite capable. And I, I did prove that to myself with the gear I have. So really, for me, to shoot 35mm is uh, really is... It kind of frees me up to do things that I, I really I just couldn't do in, in medium format. When I look at the photos I've made for the last couple of years in medium format, a lot of those, a high percentage of them, could have been shot on 4x5. And I have a much bigger negative to work with. So I don't think giving up the medium format is going to be that detrimental to my photography. I, I, I think it's going to be a major change from the way I was working. It will be, uh, you know, carrying two different systems. But I've done that before, so it shouldn't be that, shouldn't be that big a deal. Now this decision has no bearing on how I feel about the Pentax 645 system. I, I find that a very capable camera, uh, just a joy to use. It, it, in a lot of ways it was like using an SLR 35mm. It's just a little bit more bulky and it, it's not something I could use with 4x5. Where I, I know I can put together a pretty compact 35mm setup to use with 4x5. And I really want 4x5. I want that big negative. So something had to go. And that's, that's, the Pentax just has to go. I, I will probably regret it. And <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm looking forward to working different. It's probably going to take me a while to get set up with the 4x5. I'm, I'm leaning towards the Intrepid just because it's really light. It's not as stable as I would like, but I know that going in. I'm not new to large format. It's just been a long time since I've used one. And down the road, there's nothing that says I, ha I can't go with something else. But to start out, to get it into it, back into it, I need to go pretty affordable. The only thing that I've got to work out still with the 35 millimeter is how I'm going to scan the negatives. I'm not real happy with the flatbed scans. So I'm going to have to figure out how to do an SLR scan. I'm, I don't have, I don't use Lightroom, so I'm going to figure out a way to invert the files with the software I have or get an app for it that, if I can find an app that allow me to do it. So that's the stuff I've still got to work out. So when I do shoot 35 millimeter film, I still need a way to um, get some good quality scans. The transition into the 4x5 should should go pretty well uh it's just gonna take a while even if especially if i order a camera from intrepid it's gonna take six to eight weeks you know just to get just to get one and this location hasn't been very fruitful as far as compositions go really haven't found anything really nothing to that i really wanted to make a photo of oh look at that now what are you gonna do <laughs> no stay I think we're too high for the autumn color, which I'm not really into, interested in the color, but the light foliage would be a nice contrast against the dark woods. So I'm hoping for some of that in the next couple of days while there's still a little autumn left. So I think I'm gonna have to drop down in elevation just a little bit.
So we're just trying to set something up so we don't leave empty-handed today. <laughs> These are beautiful trees. It's just uh, finding an angle and a clear enough view to actually take advantage of them. On this shot, I'm using a 20 millimeter. It's probably just a little bit wide for this location that I'm in. Well, I'll check another frame. This time I moved up the hill just a few feet and put a 50 millimeter on. Kind of focusing more on this just uh, tree right here on the left. It's uh, brighter than the rest of the tree, so it'll probably, the texture on the bark should stand a little bit better. And there, the woods kind of get darker as they go back in there. Well, I think I'm going to in this video here. I didn't find a lot to photograph, but I just I did cover some ground as far as what, what the what the plans are in the future. And uh, I just wanted to let you know of my gear change. Not that it really matters to anybody. But yeah, there will be some changes in, in the channel in the not too distant future. And I think tomorrow we'll go out and find a find something to photograph. We'll do a little vlogging tomorrow. But it is it is pretty neat to walk amongst these uh, old growth forest. These old large trees. It's pretty cool. Never been here before. It's only about 40 miles from home. I didn't find a lot to photograph, but uh, that's probably on me. <laughs> Oh wait a minute! What was this? Is this a shot? I love this. I love this way this vine comes over this log. Check this out. I don't know. Maybe a detail shot. I think maybe I'll photograph that before I leave. <laughs> I'll stick it at the end of this video. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.